Alright guys, this latest chapter of Black Clover was amazing, and so I am really glad Plot Armor is back and able to cover the manga once again. The previous chapter was a really interesting one indeed, as finally after having charged his finishing move, Yuno fired his bow at Zenon and left a gaping hole in his chest. It was to be their win. As Zenon approached death, he'd flash back to his childhood. Here we'd have a look at Zenon as a child along with his siblings Dante and Vanika. We'd even have a conversation with a mysterious eldest sibling in a wheelchair who would express that Zenon was the most like him, possessing an even greater aptitude for devil possession than both Dante and Vanika. Later on, Dante would be beaten up by some other children because of his bone magic. However, he would be saved by a young fire mage named Alan. Now, Alan would later share with Zenon his dream of becoming the commander in chief of the Spade Kingdom's mage defense force for the sake of protecting their home. And in a way reminiscent of Yuno to Asta as children, Zenon would declare that his dream was the very same. And I love this parallel as it serves to provide another layer of intrigue into this fight against Yuno, which I admittedly only care so much about because I'm not all too invested in Yuno as a character, but I would like to be. But yeah, the two of them would then for years work very diligently to become as strong as they possibly could. And with this shift in desire and direction, Zenon would one day go to his elder brother and tell him that he did not want to be a devil host anymore. Eventually, they'd both make it into the magic defense force, and much like Yuno, Zenon in particular was considered to be a genius. At some point, a dungeon would appear, with the two venturing forth to explore it. However, within, much to their horror, there was a devil. One so powerful that they would likely all be wiped out by it. A presence I don't imagine was a coincidence at all. For Zenon, the only shot at victory they had was for him to use his ultimate magic to destroy the creature. But with no openings, he had no chance at success. But just then, Alan with his flaming sword would rush forward to combat the fiend. A gesture that would certainly result in his death, but at the same time did afford an opportunity of sorts. By launching his attack then and there, he would be able to kill the devil, but along with it, he would also kill Alan. Zenon had a very tough call to make here. If he didn't do so, he, the others with them, and at least the nearby townsfolk would all be slaughtered by the devil. And so he did it. He killed the monstrosity at the expense of his best friend's life. A terrible sort of despair which thoroughly broke him, shifting his ideology to be one of power over everything, very much because of his powerlessness in that situation. And so to his elder brother, he would return in pursuit of devilish power once more. But now in the present, Zenon would drop to his knees as the bone mass on half of his face broke apart. And internally, he convened with the supreme devil Beelzebub in pursuit of a deal. Which would immediately pick right back up with his latest chapter as Zenon would ask the creature to give him the heart of a devil. What we very much know to be an incredibly difficult thing to destroy. A prospect which certainly amused the devil as it would question what Zenon was willing to offer in exchange for such a thing. And without any hesitation, Zenon would offer everything. That so long as the Spade Kingdom survived, his soul was of no concern to him. And so with that, unlike the downright scummish mentalities of his siblings, Zenon, albeit in a very twisted way, is trying to do the right thing for his people even now. And you know what, it would seem that Tabata has a tendency towards using such villains, only to then have the puppeteers behind them rise to the forefront of things. And so I wonder if Zenon 2 will eventually come to assist the prince Yuno in repelling the devils, but for now, he is still very much a villain as Beelzebub would accept. The thought of Alan would flash through Zenon's head just before his transformation, as ever poetically, he would have a change of heart. Now, this whole notion of turning someone into a devil is a very fascinating thing to me. First of all, we know the soul of a person to be very closely associated with the sort of magic they possess. And so with Zenon's soul now being in Beelzebub's possession, does that then provide the creature access to bone magic similarly to how Megekula received Asir and Lopechka's magic from their souls? Furthermore, in regards to Megekula, we have previously speculated that she may have once been a human as well, and so perhaps she became a devil by a similar means. Now on the battlefield, there was a pause, followed by a realization on the part of Yuno. Zenon had changed yet again. This was beyond 100%. This was something entirely different. 
an incredible form that to me encapsulates the void of his essence. And with the hole in his chest provided to him by Yuno, it almost feels like a nod to the hollow of Bleach. And perhaps by having gone beyond the 100% threshold, Zenon may be able to make up for their previous losses in regards to keeping the ritual active and progressing. Now this sensation provided by the presence of this now especially fiendish Zenon was enough to remind Yuno of the devil Zagreed. A rather disturbing connotation considering just how formidable Zagreed was during the elf invasion arc. But Zenon would then express to his two adversaries here what had happened to him. Which made Langris conclude that Zenon has now entirely become a devil. What seems to be an even more depraved state than that which Lolopechka was subjected to for some time. Now this was certainly frustrating for Yuno as he had just given Zenon his best shot, but as he prepared for more, he would find himself to be at the mercy of the devil's onslaught. This was spatial mana domination, and that by its lonesome isn't all too crazy simply because we've already seen this spell, but what is actually damning about this is the fact that he is using spatial mana domination within spatial mana domination which is already pre-existing in this area. That is absurd. But from there, elongated bones would pierce Yuno from all directions. Yet for a moment, Zenon would cease his attacks to convey something to Yuno. Apparently with that previous arrow shot, in order to avoid killing Langris in the process, he missed Zenon's heart. That if he had killed his comrade, he would have been able to win instead. The conveyance of which on the part of Zenon was clearly him lamenting on his own tough decision in which he did the opposite. And again Zenon would continue his attacks and drive Yuno through a wall. Yuno was now down for the count and out of his spirit dive state. All that remained to face Zenon now was Langris. Now Zenon would immediately keep up the offensive in hopes of finishing things out, but just then Langris was no longer there. Now behind Zenon was Langris and someone else. Saved just in the nick of time by his older brother, it was Finral, a man Zenon was able to recognize to be the spatial mage he had seen of the Black Bulls previously. Now the ever prideful Langris would question if his brother was here to come save him yet again, but it was more than just that. Zenon was responsible for the capture of Captain Yami by way of spatial magic, and so Finral felt as though he had to join in on the fight. And he would from there make use of his magic directly on his brother and together with Langris's mana zone being able to operate within Zenon's absolute space and the precise and overwhelming speed of Langris's magic, the two were a rather formidable pairing. As these once ever distant brothers were now locked hand in hand and working together and that was the chapter. I really like this one. Zenon has only gotten better the more we know about him and overall he is just really cool. This new form especially looks really cool. And you know what, seeing Langris and Finral team up like this is pretty heartwarming considering the previous state of their relationship, but I wonder how effective they will really be against this guy and how long they can last up against him. At the very least, this may end up resulting in some major feats for the two, especially Finral. Truly with this fight, expect the unexpected. There are a whole lot of shenanigans these two can get up to when they work together. But even still, I am not expecting a complete Magna upset or anything considering how important this fight is for Yuno, but I do think we will be faced with a narrative combat structure very similar to the Magecula battle we just concluded. If you have any thoughts on the chapter, please be sure to let us know down below and help us finally achieve that long awaited 300k milestone by subscribing to Plot Armor with notifications on. Because when it comes to bringing you some of the best Black Clover content on the platform, Plot Armor has you covered. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.